Yeah, we're gonna bring it right down, bring it right down to the API. I wanted to do that because, like, if I wanted to use a framework on top of it, like, you have to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you want to use a really JavaScript-heavy framework yeah. or whatever, you're going to have to pretty much do everything through the AJAX. Or if you're doing an app, then you need the, then you need the API back in. So you yeah. So, so the way I tend to do it is that the initial hurdles are a little higher. Drawing the HTML yeah. is a lot harder than JavaScript. But in a funny way, it makes the server easier. Because the code he had to write to do that on, on this side is just, it's, it's a lot simpler when you have to do it in an API, right? Because you know, I, I, I had to have all those, um, like, rendering templates and getting the data model right and stuff. And in, in these guys, it's just JSON. So it's like doing code or running code. And that's it. There's no other, um, I mean, like, this is the whole body of the, the method, right? It's way simpler than having to, to do all the server side. So, so it, it also makes the server implementation easier. But the hurdle of, I'm doing everything on JavaScript. It can be pretty high. That's like a hard. Yeah, so did, did you start your JavaScript here or did it before? The JavaScript? I, no, no. Did you start doing JavaScript? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did it the first yeah. time I did JavaScript. And like the first week of that, I was like, this, this is like kind of hard. And then, <laughs> but by the third week, yeah, but at, at this point, you have three times as much JavaScript. Like, you have Go experience. So. Yeah, the Go is definitely, I think, harder for me yeah. than the JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah, technically kind of languages are always harder to get into. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is what I call real-time updates. That sounds really scary. Uh, but it says users should not be required to refresh their page to receive updates. Implement real-time updates by periodically pulling an API endpoint and alerting the user when new tweets are available. So if you've ever used Twitter um, and you go to a profile, uh, typically what happens here, and sorry if there's something weird here, um, is that you have your, your tweets, and what happens is while you're sitting on a page, it'll say one new tweet available, two new tweets available, three new tweets available, click it, it shows it. So in the background, it has in some way listening for changes, for new tweets, okay? Um, and so we, we can do that, we can implement that. And the way I suggested implementing it uh, and this is why I say it sounds scary, but it's actually really straightforward, is we can poll, okay? So polling means that every once in a while, perhaps every 10 seconds, maybe every 30 seconds, with some period of time, you go ask the server, are there any new tweets, okay? And then if there are, you show that little, or you just draw the tweet right there, or you refresh the page, or you know, you have some mechanism of making the new tweets show. But you're just polling every once in a while to see what. And so we could say, you know, uh, what is the most recent tweet? And just compare it to the one that's shown, right? We could do it that way. Um, or we could get the date of the most recent tweet, and we could do it that way. And if it's uh, further than the current time, sorry, the time that I loaded the page, so if there's a tweet, the most recent tweet has a date in the future compared to when I loaded the page, then that would mean that there's a new tweet available. Right? In other words, if I loaded the page at 10 o'clock and I'm polling, and now the most recent tweet says it's 11 o'clock, oh, that must be a new tweet because it wasn't there when I was here. Right? So there's a, there's a lot of ways we could do that, but the basic idea is that we poll, we ask the server. So we could implement that for our code by adding to our API a new method, right? Tweets, most recent or something. So slash API slash tweet slash recent. Most recent or something, okay. And you'd pass in the current username you're looking at, and it would get you the most recent tweet from that user, or the time of the most recent tweet, or something like that. Okay. Everybody understand? Basic mechanism here. Um, so we're going to implement that using Ajax, right, and polling, and then we'll look later tomorrow at a way to do that, not having a poll, because polling is. Well, what's wrong with polling? It's uh, whether it's my server. server. Right, all these excess requests that mostly never return anything because they're mostly not getting any data. Right? And they're also working when yep. they use it there to, to see it happen or not. That's a problem too. So they leave the browser open and you're just polling away in the background and 
people do that all the time. So, um, and then there's also this delay that can happen. What if a tweet comes and my poll interval is once a minute? Well, I don't see that tweet for a minute, right? And so that's another downside of polling. Um, so all those things are not great, and we'll see a different way to do it that can fix some of those things. Okay? But for now, we'll do it via polling because it's easy.